from the uh, United Nations. Uh, the, uh, the others, what... Uh, uh, okay. Uh, Thank you, Ambassador Tower. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm much taken value from having the UN around on the streets in Wow Town. Maybe they uncontrolled it from the government or... Uh, uh, from uh, the challenge now is to ensure that a piece of paper uh, becomes operationalized, that the RPF deploys, that the consultations over modalities, uh, which have been happening already, but now need to pick up pace and steam, uh, that those uh, bear fruit, that the AU comes and presents its proposals on the hybrid court, and that that gets uh, operationalized, given the number of atrocities that are being uh, carried out, uh, that the peace agreement be is implemented, notwithstanding the rocky road it has been on, and that the SRSG and the force commander see, and the humanitarians who put their lives at risk to try to support the people of South Sudan, see concrete progress when it comes to lifting the obstruction on this movement and lifting the restrictions on humanitarian access. The impediments that have um, existed and have What is the most memorable feature of the trip? Um, for me, it was meeting two young girls today um, in, uh, in WOW, uh, each of whom had been raped. One was 12, one was 13. Um, the 13 year old had been on her way to school from the POC site. Um, she, even though she had lost her home, her father had been killed and she ended up in a POC site. She wanted to keep going to school. And she and her neighbors who were helping to take care of her uh, knew that the road was dangerous, knew that there were soldiers on the road and there had been reports of rapes and but the little girl just really wanted to go to school. And so so all of us who had a chance to talk to her um, could see that she lives with the shame of what was done to her. Her whole community is aware of what was done to her. Um, that's devastating for her and the people who are left in her family. It is incumbent on us in the international community to never give up on the cause of peace in South Sudan, to do everything we can to, by, by pressuring the government and all armed actors who could do such monstrous things to little girls who just want to go to school or to anybody, um, but also to put in place uh, uh, a UN peacekeeping presence that is able to be more mobile and to be more out and about, just to increase the likelihood that something like that uh, can be can be stopped. The stability that civilians are really looking for needs, needs to come from. I and the rest of the council, that's what we take, is that message of, if you give us, if, if, if there is a bare minimum of peace here, we will run with it. So the, 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 the message is for this government to do its utmost to create the conditions for all IDPs returned to back home. That only governments can. It can help and it can... Uh, as a security council, what we can promise is that we will stay on this. We are not... Um, coming to South Sudan to check a box and go back to New York um, and leave UNMIS here to its own devices, we, we take these commitments very seriously. 
Um, and we have been explicit in the resolution uh, about the decisions that we will make regarding an arms embargo and sanctions if the restrictions on UNMIS are not lifted and if the RPF uh, is not able to deploy. Um, but as I said my very first night here, we would prefer in the extreme not to get to those uh, decisions. We would prefer uh, that the uh, commitments that have been made, that if operationalized could be significant, that those be held. 